Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue watching 90 Day Fiancé. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. By the way, never use these videos as a replacement for therapy. If you need a therapist, get one. You deserve it. A lot of you have emailed me or commented below saying that you've sought therapy recently. And that is music to my ears. Let's get to the show. I'm thinking that I'll get him maybe a soccer game or something, but I'm hoping that the staff can kind of help me and um, tell me what somebody his age might want to do, but what they want to play. You said you don't really know what you're looking for? No, I have no idea, really. My son is 25. I think the last time I bought one, he was 17, 18 years old, something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait. She just said her son. I thought she was buying it for Zied. Or is she just saying son because she's embarrassed about his age? A lot of people play video games. I play video games. I'm 50 years old. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with playing video games. And there's nothing wrong with her saying, yeah, I mean, Zied's coming over here. He's, he, he isn't, he's legally unable to work for six months. He needs something to do. So... I don't have any gaming system at home, so I might as well get one. I, I, don't, I don't see any reason for any shame in this at all, really. So do you remember what your son likes to play? Well, I mean, it's, it's not for my son. No? Buying it for my fiance. Oh, so she was saying she has a son, and then now she's switching to Zied, or I don't know, I'm a little confused, but... Anyway, she's giving off this vibe like she's... I'm guessing that this uh, worker at the store is like, uh, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care that your fiancé is, is in his 20s. People play video games. It's not a big deal. I, I'm just guessing that that's what that person's going to do. It's, it's just they're close to the same age. Yeah. Might be a rude question, but how old is your fiancé? He'll be 28. My son is 25. Oh, wow. Anyway, All right, well, I can help you for sure. Okay. I just want to say that there is nothing wrong with two adults dating, even if one of them is close in age to one person's child. It's, it's, I don't understand this weird uh, notion that people have of like, well, if she's dating someone who is in his 20s and she has a son in his 20s, you know, what does that mean? I, I don't understand what the connection there is. It, are people saying, like, does she want to date his son? Her own? Does she want to date her own son? Uh, no, I don't think it. <laughs> uh, in the same way that Zied is dating someone, I'm guessing, close to his own mother's age, does What's the problem? I, I did a whole episode on age difference in relationship. And according to research and according to all the thought that I've given it and all the talking I've, I've had with other people, there's nothing wrong with age difference in, in relationships. The only problem, obviously, is when someone is being exploited. And when you have a child, like a 16-year-old with a 26-year-old, then exploitation is likely. It's also possibly illegal. But we're worried about exploitation. That's what we're worried about. We're worried about the younger person being exploited and controlled by the older person, which absolutely does happen. And sometimes age is a good is a red flag that indicates that. But it, it's not an automatic indication of exploitation. I think most of us would agree that Rebecca is not exploiting Zied. Now, you can make an argument for that, but it doesn't seem to have that flavor. So that's the issue for us. Age difference is a red flag for exploitation, but it is by no means an indication of exploitation. Also, you can be the same age and someone can exploit the other person. Also, you can be younger than someone and exploit the older person. Exploitation is the problem, not age difference, unless it's a child, you know, a younger person. And really what we're concerned about is maturity level. Then it doesn't matter if exploitation is happening explicitly or not. It very likely is happening or it's going to happen. So I bring up maturity level because you can be 25 
and very immature and dating a 35-year-old and a 25, 35-year-old might not raise a lot of eyebrows. But if you're 25 and it's your very first relationship or something along those lines, you can absolutely be exploited even though the age difference isn't as eye-raising as, say, uh, I think she's 47 or something and he's 28. So we need to get rid of that stigma around age difference. Uh, it, empirically, the science does not have any indication of a problem. You know, what would, we, we, what would we be looking for to say that age difference was a good reason to shame people? Well, we'd be looking for outcomes like automatic exploitation or a much higher rate of exploitation. That's not in the evidence. The other thing we'd be looking for is the relationship will not last. And there is a slight signal that if, you're, if the age difference is 10 years or more, that there is a, you have a slightly higher risk of the relationship not lasting as long as other relationships do. But it's not a huge difference. It's just a matter of average length of relationship. Because certainly you can be the same age and the relationship isn't going to last. So we need to reduce that stigma. So, you know, she says that and then the worker's like, oh, wow. You know, maybe the worker's just like, wow, okay, anyway, moving on. <laughs> but anyway, I just, I just wish Rebecca and Zia didn't have to face that stigma or the internalized stigma that they have. Now, the other thing I'll say is that some of you watching might have been in a relationship where you were with someone that was older than you and that person exploited you. And you're perhaps even traumatized by that. And those, those things can really happen, particularly when you're particularly young, like you're 13 and you're with a 30-year-old or something, obviously. So I'm not saying that exploitation does not happen with age difference relationships. I'm not saying that it does happen. I'm just not saying that an age difference indicates exploitation. That's what I'm saying. It's like charming, you know, that she's trying to buy like this thing that she thinks her fiance would enjoy. So I think this would be good. Can he hook? Two thumbs up for the video game worker. <laughs> I think it's great that she wants to buy something for her fiance that her fiance wants. That's all this is. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if this was me and I was going to another country and I didn't have a game console that I was bringing with me I w and I couldn't work for six months and I was going to be stuck at home and I didn't have any friends, I didn't know what to do, I would hope they'd buy me a gaming console too. Now, I'm not into soccer games, but, um, you know, like what games would I like on a gaming console? Strategy games? Uh that's usually what I like. <laughs> Look up like a debit card to it and uh -huh. buy games and stuff. Yeah. Awesome. But her fiance is around the same age as her son and it kind of makes me wonder, like, is her son comfortable with the relationship? I don't think, I don't, I don't think we've met the son. We've met the daughter. The daughter seems cautiously supportive. Yeah, I, I, we, I, we haven't, I don't know if we have talked with the son yet. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be 2-15-15. Very cool. Oh, who's this on the card? Ah, uh, that would be my fiancé. Okay, so <laughs> there are two different ways of... The two of them have pictures of each other on everything. On mugs and shirts and all these sorts of things. And on their credit cards. I did not know that you could do that that you could get a personalized, what looks to be a Wells Fargo. I, I always love how they blur things out and it's obvious. Uh, credit card that has uh, someone else's face giving, I think, it's, I think it's kissy lips that he's doing. I don't, I'm not quite sure. Imagine giving, <laughs> I mean, each to their own. Um, I literally have... Uh, a picture of my wife on my wallet, but it's like a goofy picture of us together. It's actually a family photo. Um, and I have pictures of my animals. You can actually do this if you go to um, Mighty Wallets. That's what it's called. I'll do a plug for Mighty Wallets. And they are super thin, recyclable paper. 
and it's pretty strong. I don't like those big leather ones that go in your pocket. Anyway, and you can customize it online, Mighty Wallets, and you can actually put whatever picture you want to on your wallet. And so I have pictures of, of my animals. But on my credit card that people have to look at and go like, who is this person? <laughs> this isn't you. I'm just going to say as a citizen, as a therapist, of course, I don't care. People do what they do. But as a citizen, there's a line between being cutesy and I don't know what label to put on the other side. In the comments, you tell me, what word would you say? Is it cutesy or is it something else? Ziet and I are 21 years apart. And yes, there are regularly times where I stop and think, what the hell am I doing? It's never when I'm talking to him. But most people that I come across can't possibly understand the special bond that we share. Here's your receipt. We appreciate Thank you, you so coming much. out tonight. Yes, and that's sad to me. That is actual oppression. In the same way that we discriminate and are prejudiced against all sorts of people in our society, we are also discriminatory and prejudicial towards this kind of relationship. So she said 21, so if 28, so she's 49. And what's wrong with that? Consenting adults past a certain age in particular why would we stigmatize that? Why would we frown upon that? Why would we shame that? And that, and what a shame on society that they have to walk around making excuses and feeling like there's something wrong with them. That, that, that there's so many things that we do that to, right? We do it to we do it to people based on race and gender and sexual orientation. We do it to people for so many reasons, and for this too, it's like. We're, we just love to shame people for no reason and make people feel bad about themselves for no reason. There are plenty of good reasons why we should make people feel bad about themselves. Like when people exploit people, we should maybe make that person feel bad about that. How dare you exploit someone? That's bad. You know, there, there are things that people do that are legitimately immoral. Harming others knowingly. I'm going to get that person even though it's not justified. That sort of thing happens all the time. Let's, let's point our shame where it should go. <laughs> Why towards her? <laughs> it's just mind-boggling how short-minded we are. <laughs> like, we're just short-minded, small-minded, short-sighted. It is 2 a.m. now, but it's morning in Tunisia, and Ziad is on his way to the interview right now. Yeah, we're pretty nervous. Blankets as well, not just credit cards and mugs and T-shirts and pillows and everything else, but, uh, but blankets as well. So you tell me, cutesy or something else? One more week. So you leave your passport with them? Yeah. I, I really am shocked and I don't know what to think. We always knew that Ziad could get denied, but now we're just being told they, they're taking his passport and come back later. That must be an awful feeling to be in the hands of a government agency, a nameless, frustrating government agency. That must just be a horrible feeling. I, I, we've seen scenes like this before, but I don't know. I feel like this one particularly hits hard. It's like okay, when will you find out what's going to happen? Will we ever be able to be in a relationship? It, you know, when you're wanting to be with someone, you don't want barriers to get in the way and to have a, a whole entire government to get, get in your way it must just be very powerless feeling. The interview went. You think this was, it was good? Yeah, I think, okay. I just hate that they're going to make us wait one more week. Yeah, I know. The other thing I'll say to some, about some of these couples is I'm surprised that, I mean, I guess it makes sense that they are hoping for things to be rapidly resolved. I don't know if it, I'm just pessimistic, but today my, my wife's car broke down and the long story short, uh, she was in contact with the towing people and they said they'd be there in 45 minutes. And in my head, I, I doubled that. I said, ah, that's probably like two hours. 
just because tow truck guys, when they say, oh, we'll be there in 45 minutes, I don't think I've ever had them show up at 45 minutes. <laughs> it's just when delivery people will be like, oh, we'll definitely be there at eight. It's like, well, you know, eight to 10, you know. If I was heading into this, I, that's that would be my mindset of like, well, I'm heading into this government agency process, so who knows how long this thing is going to take. It could take weeks, it could take days, it could take months, it could take years. I really just don't know because we're talking about a government agency here. So sometimes I wish the people on the show would adopt that expectation of like, well, let's hope for the best, but you know, let's let's be realistic on the timeline here and let's not get our hopes up too high because we might be um, in a lot of despair when we bump up against the reality of a bureaucracy. All right, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Let me know what you think of the comments as always, and please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.